The family sadhana for the second day of Panchaganapati is to create a vibration of love and harmony among neighbors, relatives, and close friends. This is a day for presenting gifts to next door neighbors, relatives that live in the area, and close friends. The sadhana of the day is to offer apologies and clear up misunderstandings. Relatives and friends living in far off places are written to or called. Forgiveness is sought, apologies made, and tensions released. As on the other four days, all gifts received today are placed unopened before Pancha Ganapati. All too often in life, there are misunderstandings and they're not cleared up. They just build one upon another after another after another, year after year after year. And pretty soon, some relatives, it's even hard to talk to them anymore. We've got so many misunderstandings we've managed to pile up over the years. What Gurudeva is doing here is he's encouraging us to clear them up on a yearly basis. In other words, this is the day to do it. We can't procrastinate and it's not supposed to be done tomorrow or the day after. This is the day to do it, the second day of Panchaganapati. It's hard to do, particularly initially. It can be a new activity for some of us, but it's worthwhile. We don't realize how much tension and how much subconscious disturbances that we feel come from these kinds of misunderstandings that we've just let built up that could be resolved, particularly early on. One of the beauties of resolving issues with relatives, neighbors, and friends on a yearly basis is it's fairly recent. It's something both parties can remember. It's not something that happened five years ago. The older something gets, the harder it is to talk about it. Doing it within the same year is a great practice, therefore. One of the interesting aspects of life is somehow we get mistreated. Have you ever noticed that? Things happen to us that we definitely don't deserve. We didn't do anything, anything at all to cause that to happen, and yet these negative events happen to us anyway. Fortunately, Hinduism has a solid explanation in the belief in karma and reincarnation that a lot of what happens to us is the result of what we did in past lives, not this life. Law of karma is a bit slow. So we do something this life, it might manifest in the next life or in the life after. Karma is in no hurry. It spaces things out. That's what I like to say. You don't get too many negative events at once spaces them out. You get a few major ones and then things go well for a while. Then you get another major one and so forth. They're nicely spaced out. But human nature doesn't want to accept that. Someone mistreats us. Human nature is to be upset with the person who mistreated us. How many are able to say at the time we're mistreated, oh, thank you so much for mistreating me and bringing my karma back to me. How many can say that? That's what we should say, right? Thank you so much for mistreating me. This karma is gone, and as long as I don't retaliate, it's totally gone. No, we don't think that way at the moment. We get upset with the person. Perhaps we even retaliate. A simple example I use in one of my talks is about working in an office where someone always takes everybody else's pens. He's a pen thief. <laughs> pen thief. What do you do? Do you when you when you realize he's taken your pen, do you wait till the lunch break and go over and take his? <laughs> or take all his pens? You know, that's retaliation. It sounds kind of simple, but it would be retaliation. You just 
feel upset about it? Or do you do something? The action that's suggested in the talk is you buy a good supply of pens and on an appropriate day you give them to him. <laughs> so, you know, you always seem to be running out of pens. And here, here's a good supply. This should last you a year or two. And solve the problem and also get rid of any grudge on your part. Because to buy somebody pens and give them to them, you have to forgive them and realize it's, it's just a weakness. There's a helpful write-up in what we call the Ten Principles of Karma Management that relates to mistreatment. The first three in particular. First one is what we were talking about, refrain from retaliation. Good example is teenager at school, say 14, 15 year old who gets mistreated by some of the other teenagers, which happens in school. What does the teenager do? Does he gather up his friends and fight them back the next day? That would be retaliation. Not a good solution. Does he do nothing? That's not good either because he's going to resent it. Therefore, the best action is to respond through appropriate channels. The channels in this case would be a teacher, a principal, a yard supervisor, you know, either the child, him or herself, or with the help of a parent, approaches the right person and presents the problem. He tries to get it adjusted so it won't happen again through going through channels. That's why we have policemen in the world. You know, if someone shoots someone in our family, we're not supposed to go out and shoot someone back. And the police do that. <laughs> they take care of it for us. We need to use channels. It's not appropriate to do nothing when we're mistreated in a serious way, but we definitely have to use the proper channels. If we can manage to avoid retaliating, the second point is accept responsibility, which means whatever happens to us is our own creation. There's a verse in the Tudukural that says, why do those moan when destiny brings them misfortune who are so glad when it brings them fortune? You know, human nature. When our karma is good, we're very happy to receive it. But when our karma is bad, we kind of reject it. But being able to accept that whatever happens to us is supposed to happen to us and is our own creation because of how we've acted in a past life is very liberating. Because then we don't blame the person who mistreated us. One way to make it impersonal is to think, well, if this person didn't mistreat me, someone else would have to. Because I'm destined to receive that action back from one person or another. So that helps not look at it personally, that this is a bad person, they mistreated me. Somebody has to fulfill that role. You're causing someone to fulfill that role. And then the third step is to forgive the person. Because again, it's human nature, even if we manage to do the first two steps, we don't retaliate. We kind of philosophically accept that it's my creation, the person is the instrument, we can still resent the person. We're still upset with them, and we're still clinging to the event. How do we know we're clinging to the event? We remember it frequently. That's how we know we haven't let go. The Tudukura gives us advice. Let it go. Be kind to the person. If you're kind to the person, what happens? They become ashamed of their behavior. They're encouraged to up the standard of their behavior by you responding in a cultured way. Forgiving them. Saying, oh, I'm sure you didn't mean it. And actually having that sense in your heart. It encourages them to avoid that kind of behavior in the future by showing them you don't believe in 
that kind of retaliation and ordinariness. You want to approach it in a spiritual way. Gurudeva has an interesting definition of moksha. Usually when you read about moksha, it'll say something like, moksha is achieved, moksha is liberation from rebirth, and it is achieved through realization of God. Standard Hindu explanation. We need to realize God in a very profound way, and then we're liberated. There's no need to come back. Gurudeva adds an important second area to that. He says liberation is achieved, yes, when you profoundly realize God, but also when you resolve all karma. That's a requirement too. We can't have things to receive here. We can't be scheduled to be the recipient of certain of our karma and achieve moksha because we won't be here to receive it. That doesn't, so we have to come back just to receive the karma. Therefore, that's why the idea of karma management is so important. We want to handle well the karma that comes back to us through non-retaliation, acceptance, and forgiveness, as well as act wisely on our own and not create a new karma. And therefore, the karma is lessening and that's bringing us closer to the goal of moksha. Om Namah Shivaya.